Hey guys, here's some quick directions for digital ink. If you are using the digital ink platform inside of zip forms plus to sign your documents. So when you're in your transaction, you'll just go ahead and click on your transaction that you want to work on. You're going to click on the, what looks like an icon for paper. That's your documents. You're going to go through and edit all of your documents, and then you can click on the e-signature button. We're going to create a new signature packet. We're going to give that packet a name. We're going to sign, do a signed service. Are we using DocuSign or Digital Ink? We're going to go ahead and select the documents that we want to use. You can do all of these, none of these, or add an external document like your closing costs that you can go ahead and upload those and get signed. So we're going to hit the close button. You can see the document is added at the bottom. We're going to go hit next. Now we got to pick the person that we want to send these to. So we're going to hit the plus button. We're going to go to our transaction party and we're going to choose who this is going to. It's going to go to the seller, buyer, or uh, both and yourself. So we're going to hit close. We're going to hit the next button. This is going to spin up the electronic signatures. It may ask you if you want to secure your system for another additional $5 per transaction. Um, I don't think it's necessary because it does give you where this is all coming from um, on an audit trail. So when you pick the seller, it will put all of the initials in the appropriate boxes that are needed and where they're needed to go. If you'd like to add a signature, just simply left click, hold it down and drag it over. It's going to put the date in there for you already. You can pull the initials over just like that and a text box as well. If you don't want something to be mandatory for signature, you can go ahead and click the little pinwheel at the top there. And you can take off the mandatory, which means they don't have to sign it at that spot. So we're going to hit apply and we're going to go ahead and hit the send button. I don't know if you guys saw there was a save button back there. If you want to save it as a draft because you're not re yet ready, you can actually hit that save. So in your title, that's your subject line of what you want to send. You can go ahead and in your email message, put something in there and we're going to go ahead and hit send. This is going to generate the PDF that's going to go to the client for electronic signature. This is what your screen looks like. You can go ahead and close out of there. So we're going to go to the client's email. This is going to be what they see. Your documents are ready. So we're going to hit sign our document. We have a new user, an existing account, and a guest. If you have, if you want, you can tell your client to go ahead and do a new user. That way they can log in make it a little bit easier for signature, but right now they can do a guest account too. It does ask for a password, so it's still secured. So we're going to continue without an account. It's going to ask them to accept signing electronically. They're going to plug in a password. Now, if this is the first time they're signing in as a guest, it's going to ask them to do that twice. They have the ability to let me review the document or to go. I like them to do the let me review so they can actually read through the document before they start signing because when you hit the go button, it goes right to the initials or signature that's at the top. So they'll click through just like on any other signature program. They'll click everywhere there's an initial. And now we are done. So they're either asked to stay here and review or click the finish button. When they click the finish button, it creates a PDF that cannot be changed at this point. So we can't override that PDF that is locked. When we go back to our account in zip forms, we'll be in our transaction. Click on the documents button again in the middle of the screen. And you'll see folders on the side. These are folders built around your e-signatures. So if you were to click on any of those, what you're going to see is the audit trail that tells you where it came from, what IP address opened it up to sign it, and your electronically signed document. So when you open that, you'll see all the signatures are built into the bottom of the forms where they signed. You can download this and put this right into Google Drive for the listing manager or the conveyancer. I hope this helps. Let me know if you need any additional help. You can give me a call at any time. Thanks so much.